yeah, just let your professors know ahead of time what your goals are. And most of the time, since no one does this, they're going to help you out. Hey everyone, welcome to Making Moves with Bea and Daniel. I'm Daniel. I'm Bea. And welcome to the podcast. In this podcast, we talk about how to succeed as new immigrants and international students in Canada and how to move in Canada and basically just life here in general. All right. How are you? Good, good. Good. Just got home from work. <laughs> she just got home from work. I know. I know. She was like, yo, let's record a podcast after work. And I know she's so tired, but we're doing yeah. this for y'all. <laughs> okay. So what's our treat of the day? <laughs> Today's treat of the day is still the same. <laughs> grapefruit juice. We just finished recording that other episode and we got grapefruit juice right here. And I kind of like it now. Mm. Said it tastes like Negroni. If you guys it know tastes like Negroni. I like Negroni now. <laughs> Mm. Okay, that's today's treat of the day. <laughs> All right, and for today's episode, we want to talk about like how to succeed as international students in Canada. Because I know most of our listeners are like planning on going here. Mm-hmm. So basically, just success tips and maybe just like expectations of what to get here. So the first one that I would say. To like, maybe like, not succeed, but like, just have peace of mind. Maybe maybe I'll put it as a success tip as well. So it's basically, you have to know and understand your finances. Because when you go here with just enough money, it's going to be so stressful for you. Because when, when you go here and let's say you have a runway of like, like me before I just had three months living expenses and if that runs out and if i don't get a job then i can't pay for rent so that's super stressful so make sure to figure out your finances first know exactly how much extra cash you have so that you know that you have a deadline when to actually look for a job because w- when we got here what did we do we just we didn't look for a job yet right because we knew we had yeah because what we did was we wanted to know how hard the how hard or like What's the school load first? Mm. Because we don't want to like overwhelm ourselves because we hadn't studied in a while. We oh, haven't right. studied in a while. So we we're like, um, are we gonna be able to like do our homeworks, do our um attend our classes, um, you know, perform well in school if we um if we have a job at the same time. So we just wanted to gauge if we can how hard the school is first before we got a job. Yeah. Exactly. So we, we gauge that out. And aside from wanting to like just gauge it, we wanted to somehow explore mm-hmm. uh, the city for city of Toronto, yeah. Scarborough. So it's wherever. very new to us. It's yeah. new. I mean, we, we went here. And of course, if you go here and you dive straight into like school and work, then mm. I'm telling you now, it, it's quite stressful. So like yeah. if you have enough time, just like spend a month or like two. Yeah. to f- Or if you have like extra money or budget but if you if you don't have maybe you have to like start working as soon as your school starts so it really depends but we suggest to you know have a little extra money um at least three months worth or four or five months worth of money so that you don't have to worry about getting a job right away and you know um Find yourself having a hard time adjusting right. here. So. Right. Give yourself time to adjust. But again, that's if you have, I don't know, man, at least two, mm. two to three months worth of living expenses. Because yeah. it's going to save you a lot of a lot of stress because it does get stressful. Mm. And like I think that's a huge success tip right there. You have to manage your stress. So by knowing your finances and knowing exactly you know, your budget and all these things, once you stop worrying about money, then you can focus more on school. You can focus more on eventually getting a job and going to your permanent residency. Do you have anything more to add to that? No. No? Okay, so that's point one. Point two for uh, success tips for international students is let's talk about school. Let's talk about school. Um, Mm -hmm. You want to talk about group work? (laughs) (laughs) 
Don't get into that. <laughs> Yo. Okay, yeah, here's the thing. I'm studying again, so no, the no, group I'm, work, I'm group work sucks. It, group, group it work sucks. Sucks. No, I mean, sucks so it's okay. Bad. I mean, it's okay if you guys have your, if you have your job, if you have a job, if you have so much, um, so much things going on in your life. Just make sure to like contribute and you know participate in your group works instead right. of you know um letting the leaders or all other your other group mates um have trouble right. you know asking you for your part or something like that yeah no i i, I know i joke about this but mm. it's just a thing here like group works are like so important to these universities because they they're like Oh, because you can't choose your, mm, work your workmates mates in the future. But here's the thing, universities. Here's the thing. Workers are paid to work. Yeah. Right? Well, you, I can't choose my workmates, but I know that they're going to do their work. Because if not, mm. they're going to get fired. In school, if we can't choose our group mates, they don't get compensated to go to class they don't get compensated to get high grades so they're yeah. like if and, and group work is just you know like 20 10 percent of the grades so they don't really care if they don't get that 10 or 20 percent so because they have other um other chances to like get better grades so sometimes they just don't care about right. those group works and here's the thing like i'm gonna straight i'm gonna tell you straight up a huge percentage of international students don't really go here to focus on studies. It, it's mm. just not it. You will get uh, schoolmates or classmates or groupmates who just go here. And since attendance is mostly not required yeah. for subjects, they'll literally just go in when there's a quiz. And you, mm. if, you if you're taking your classes seriously and you want to get into a high grade in group works, it's going to be super stressful for you. Yeah. So... I think, aside from ranting, we, we, we could have three episodes on this because it sucks so bad. But in terms of the success tip that I have for you, what really worked for me, just because I'm such a vocal person and I, well, I'm not an overachiever, but I want to achieve something. Whenever your professor tells you, okay, you're going to be in random groups, I think what really helped me out was before the semester started, or, well, on the first week of the semester, I already emailed my professors. I'm like, hey, I'm gunning for a scholarship. I'm gunning for an A. I know that we're going to have some group group work wherein I'll have random group mates. But this is my situation. I need it for my permanent residency, blah, blah, blah. Can you make an exception for me for me to choose my group mates? And that worked, like, I'd say 90% of the time. Mm. Like... It just works because your professors are not here to punish you. They're, they're going to work with you because they want you to succeed. I think a lot of students think, think like, oh, yeah, the, student, the professors just want to give us so much homework. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just let your professors know ahead of time what your goals are. And most of the time, since no one does this, they're going to help you out. But if, for example, they say, no, we'll stick to random groupings, then you counter and you say, okay, but... If ever I do have group mates who don't perform, can I kick them out of the group? And mm. I've kicked out, not kidding, at least five people from my groups. <laughs> and it felt so good. I was like, mm, um, bye. Yeah. So yeah, group mates, group work suck. So that's that's a tip. Um, what else? You're studying now. Do you have a tip? Like how to succeed? Yeah. Like what really helped you? Because Bay is balancing. Uh, work in school right now, but you're working like 20 hours per week, right? Yeah. And international students can now work for mm. more than 20 yeah, hours. More a week. than 20 hours. But I know that 20 hours is already like mm. tough for you. Yeah. How do you like manage school and working? So I just make sure that I organize my schedule. So before, let's say, before a school week, I make sure, I make sure that before a uh, weekend before the school week, um, I would um, check what I need to submit or what um, what are the deadlines. If I have deadlines on that week for like a certain subject or um, like let's say um, I have subjects that um, have quizzes or tests on that week, I would make sure to study ahead of time and put it on my like calendar so that I will not forget how important like 
the days or like tasks for the school on that week. So I think um, just make sure to organize your schedule. I think that's the most important. And um, yeah, you can, you have to prioritize both your school and work. So just make sure to balance things out, balance your time. So yeah. Right. Because again, it, it, you, you, you hear me say this all the time, but it will be stressful. It will be. Um, yeah. Like when I was a student, 20 hours per week was kind of 20 hours of week per uh, 20 hours of week. What? 20 hours of work <laughs> per week. Uh, it sounds it doesn't sound much, but sometimes school throws a lot of stuff in your way. Like mm. and you don't have much time to to solve it. So it's just really does it come down to just basically time management or is there like it a is, deeper level i think it's time management and like how how much are you willing to like give how much time do you want to give to your like studies because i have classmates right now we're working 40 hours a week but still get a plus um get wow. um yeah make outstanding group works um let's say like perfects the exams as well so and then i have classmates who works 20 hours or like um below that who are struggling um failing exams not attending classes so yeah i think it really depends on the student on what is important what's more important to them like the school or their work or anything outside anything outside school and work right so. so it's basically like set your priorities straight and mm. know how to manage your time i think actually that's the most important thing yeah let's put that to number one i think that's the most <laughs> important thing actually um and then are there, are there anything else i'm trying to think now uh because i have a lot of tips on like when you're about to graduate but when you're just starting out as a student i think i think those are three solid tips um so again to recap know your finances because once you deal with the financial aspect of it and you take that out of the equation you're like yes i can pay my bills yes i can survive then that's good uh second is there will be a lot of group works and it, it's gonna suck so learn how to manage that use the script that i just used for professors just send them an email or something and a uh, third is to uh i think that's the most important thing is to Learn how to set your prior priorities straight and learn how to uh, manage your time. So I think those are three pretty solid tips. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's it for now. We're, we'll add more tips in future episodes. But uh, yeah, if you like that, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, subscribe to our podcast. And uh, you can listen to this in Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to your podcast. We'll upload it there. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Again, we're Bay and Daniel. And uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>